Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are starting our service today and welcome you all that are logging in on Facebook and on YouTube. And I believe you're praying for the service and you heard about the announcement that next week, starting from Sunday, we'll be having a consecration week where we shall be fasting and praying, committing ourselves to God, cleaning our lives, making right, uh, preparing our hearts for a blessing from God. Consecration uh, is when we give ourselves to God and uh, we sanctify ourselves, we give ourselves to God and we meet his requirement and we receive the Holy Spirit, we prepare our, our lives. In the Old Testament, there the feast of unleavened bread that was seven days with uh, uh, eating bread with no living. And now we don't want sin in our lives. So we've concentrated a fast and a prayer time saying that uh, from uh, Wednesday and Friday, we'll be having fasting days. Uh, those who can join us in fasting on Wednesday and on Friday, we'll be fasting from morning, breaking in the evening. And then again, th those who may be expecting mothers and uh, breastfeeding ones, uh, you fast according to how God leads you. If you are not able to fast, those who have situations and conditions, it's up to you. Fasting is by revelation, by inspiration. I always say, if you want things to move faster, fast. So today, I'm going to take a subject reading from Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, where Paul says, um, Beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the from the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we start this service, we invite you, the author, uh, the one who wrote the Bible, the author and finisher of our faith. May you come, Father, and inspire us and direct us and transform our situations. May the power of the written word, the power of the spoken word, the power of the revealed word uh, be seen in manifestation in our lives. That whosoever is listening now and there's a situation in their lives, may they be healed, may they be transformed, may they be delivered, may they be saved, may they be prospered, may they be blessed. May your hand, that unseen hand, start moving in a mighty way, Father, blessing your children and breaking their yokes. Father, may you bring revelation and real revelation of the word that will bring them, Father, even to a realization of the time that we are living in. I pray, Father, that if there be any sinner that will be watching and listening, oh Lord, Father, that their lives will be transformed, that they will give themselves to you and realize that there is a fountain filled with blood that is drawn from Immanuel's face, that when they plunge beneath the flood, they will lose all their guilty stains. I also pray, Father, for all the sick people who will be listening, and the Father, their faith may it heal them. Father, may they know that faith comes by hearing as they hear the word. May something start materializing and happening in their hearts that will be instant testimonies and blessings. I commit this service into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We're starting the service. Um, we read here that uh, we are beholding when we are reading the word of God we, um, the glory of the Lord. So what we are reading here is not the words of men, but it's the glory of the Lord. The anointing in the scriptures can come out of the pages into your life. The anointing in the spoken with the anointing in the sermons can be tapped. Those untapped resources, you can uh, pull it into your life. You can draw from God. He says we are transformed into the same image. When you read about the warriors of the Bible, you become a warrior again. When you read about the overcomers in the Bible, you become an overcomer. When you read about the anointed ones in the Bible, you become an anointed ones. When you read about their victories, you gain your victories. When you read about divine healing, you get divine healing. When you read about the blessings of the Lord, you gain the blessings of the Lord. So we are changed from glory to glory. So there is no stagnation in the life of a believer. You keep going higher and higher from faith to faith, from realm to realm, from victory to victory, from glory to glory, higher and higher every time, testimony to testimony, even as from the Lord, the Holy Spirit. So Paul, when he talks about uh, transformation, he was also transformed. It's good to talk about what has happened to you. Not what is just you are guessing from somewhere. When he was on his Damascus road, when he was going to persecute the Christians, something happened to him. He met the pillar of fire. He met the light that transformed him. And he fell from his high horse and he was changed. That pillar of fire spoke to him and he was transformed. When you meet God, when you meet that light that transforms your life, you'll never be the same. you never have the same appetites. you never dress the same. you never speak the same. you never have the same atmosphere of dwelling. you never have the same realm of dwelling. You live in a higher sphere, in a higher dimension. So he was changed and he was transformed. And he keep writing that, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you look at transformation, it's like when a butterfly, it, it passes through a painful process 
where it is changed and it becomes another different species. As a caterpillar, it will be like it, it cannot move, it cannot cross boundaries, it cannot fly from nation to nation. It is limited. So your life, if you are not yet transformed or converted by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are limited. You cannot overcome, you cannot uh, reach certain levels in the glory of God. But when it is transformed, it can now, it passes through that hard process. Now a believer must have a decision to pass through even the hard process of meeting God's requirement of repentance, of dying to yourself. When you are in that cocoon and in the valley of decision, saying, Lord, you have thine own way when you are shutting with God in a secret place, dying to yourself so that you are renewed. When this outward man is dying, the inward man is renewed every day. So something beautiful, something good will be happening in your life when God is working Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. He's transforming you to be an overcomer. He's transforming you that the things you used to do, you can do them no more. God can transform your life. He can transform your marriage. He can transform your prayer life. He can transform your nature. The nature that is stingy can go away. The lustful nature can go away. God can take a hold of you as a porter takes a hold of the of the clay and make something beautiful out of it. When you see a sculptor, man, when he's taking a hold of a, maybe a log and he starts transforming that log into a beautiful maybe leopard or lion. That is how God takes our old past life, uh, our nature, and he transforms us. Throughout the church ages, God would, uh, th there will be forces of evil that will come against the church. But every time in every church, it started shy. I'll be moving so that I can get there. And, uh, and God will raise a messenger that will bring the light of his presence so that people are not in darkness. The enemy will rise like a flood, maybe as the white horse rider, to bring deception. So every time there's the deformer, the devil, then the transformer, that is God, who is raising a standard, the lion anointing against the spirit of the enemy. When the enemy will come like a red horse rider, um, maybe martyrdom and killing the people there, God will raise an ox anointing that they will bear the cross like Jesus bears the cross uh, he say, and we also become uh, burden bearers uh, when the enemy will come like a black horse writer in famine times and God will raise a man anointing when the man of God rose against the deception of the hour, the spirit of God raising a standard, when the enemy will rise in the last day that we are living in as the pale horse writer followed by death the equal anointing was released, uh, which flies higher than the deception of this time. We are given two wings of a great equal to fly to another realm. So it's the dawning of the new day. It's the rising of the sun. So throughout the church ages, uh, you find that there will be forces of evil that bring you down. And then, in, like in the days, I will put it like when the four writers came against the church, they left the church at the valley stage. Like when the four insects, palmerworm, kankerworm, locust, and caterpillar, they left the stump stage of the tree. Like the four tricks of Delilah, they left, um, um, I'll go back to that one, uh, the four tricks of Delilah, they left Samson uh, at the valley stage of his life. So if we read about the four messengers of Job that left Job at the airship when they said your children are gone, your sheep are gone. And then in the book of Ruth, we find the valley stage of the story of Ruth. But God is a God of restoration. When the deformer worked his way of destroying the church, God did not just watch destruction. God made a way to bring back that which was lost. So even in your life, God makes a way to bring back that which was lost. So there is an upward way again of restoration. When God says, I will restore, we see again in the life of the prodigal son, when the deformer had deformed him. Look at also in your life, the deformer has stolen your prayer time. The deformer has taken the love to testify. The deformer has taken the time to, to read the Bible. And you are now busy with other things. So the prodigal son, when he would fain had eaten with the pigs, he looked at himself in a deformed status when he was a child. So he said, I will go back. He came to himself, which was a perfect realization. He says, look, let me go back by repentance. Whatever it cost me, whatever humiliation. He knew that the father is waiting somewhere. To embrace him. So even if you are backslidden today, even if you have lost many precious years today, God is waiting to bring you back to your position. He will set you free from bondage to freedom. 
from oppression to dominion, from poverty to riches, from being hell bound to heaven bound, from amnesia to consciousness, from death to life, from cycles of failure to permanent victory, from deception to revelation, from limitation to unlimited power, from lies to truth, from weakness to perfect strength, from sickness to health, from defeat to victory, from backsliding to revival, from barrenness to fruitfulness, from torment to happiness, from rags to riches, from condemnation to commendation, from being dormant to being dominant, from being a victim to being a victor, from, from uh, grasp to grace, from mess to mercy, from emptiness to abundance. So throughout the church edges, God will set a way when the enemy would come like the flood, he will bring a standard. God will raise a standard against the enemy because the devil must be opposed in all his depths. So when they will come, Nicolaitanism, Palamism, Jezebelism, in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, those forces of evil rising against the church to destroy the church, those forces of evil rising against your marriage, against your life, against your finances, against your commitment to God. So destroying and leaving a stamp of Christianity in your life. God says, I will restore. So whatever was taken away from your life, we are forcing the restoration. What the palmer wimp, locust and caterpillar took away, it says in Joel 2 verse 25, what was eaten by these things, God says, I will restore. So we see that, that palmer wimp, locust, maybe spirits from, yeah, that were damaging and eating the devourer that was active in your life. Forces of evil that were galloping, horses of the devil that were all over your life. But this is not how the story ends. There is a promised transformation, a promised restoration. And God rises on the scene with a message, which is the word, which is ancient words, changing you and changing me. When the enemy went for the back, which is the protection, the doctrine, the teachings, the truth, and left the church exposed to attacks, because one sin opens an attack form for, for the other sin. So he went also for the leaves, which is the fellowship and divine healing in the church because the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nation and the, the enemy came again and went for the life until the church is a dead without form having a form of godliness with uh, but without the power thereof and went for the fruit until the fruits of the spirit the manifestation of god uh, in the church was taken away but now we are back it's harvest time again god says the seed that fell on the ground in the days of the theatira age which is the dark ages is that it sprouted again in the Lutheran movement and it's, it came up as the stock again and tassel in, in, in the Western movement, then uh, as the shark in the Pentecostal movement, and now the seed is back to bring the seed again. It's with time again, it's getting to harvest time. The message is now, is now this is not Pentecostal age, it's now bright edge. We are back to the eternal promised land. That life that was in Luther in justification, and in Wesley, in sanctification, and in Pentecost, in restoration of gift, is now coming back to restoration of all things, the word restored again. So, we find that, uh, I will move to the next quote there, the God is the power of transformation. Nothing happens um, until the pain of remaining the same is outweighed, uh, uh, the pain of change outweighs the pain of remaining the same. If you want something to happen, the pain of change must outweigh the pain of remaining the same. You take steps and say, I cannot remain like this. There is a height that I must reach as a believer. There are levels in the spirits. There are levels in the anointing. There are levels in blessings. There are levels in the depths of the word of God. So you take the steps and you say, the pain of remaining like this, like an eagle in the barnyard, when I'm supposed to be flying in the heavenlies, you hear the eagle scream saying, this is the time to arise, open your Old and te New Testament, your wings, and let the word carry you to the realms that you have never reached before. There is nothing greater than love. That is one of the transforming powers. Brother Tapio and the team, they acted a uh, film about the transformed marriage, transformed by love. So if your marriage is in, is in bumps and uh, tempest and, and uh, whirlpools, the power that will transform it is love. There is a, when the prophet was preaching, there was a dark spirit a dark cloud over a certain lady which was a spirit of death that was over her. maybe as i'm preaching there's a dark cloud in your family um he says actually the only thing that kept me from being saved when i was 12 years old was a spirit that hung over me the devil but in uh, uh, saying wait a little bit longer but when that spirit was cast out you are saved 
So if there is a spirit of sickness over you, God can transform. He can change that picture. Like that boy who was saying, it's dark here, it's dark here. Then all of a sudden, when the light came, he says, it's light, it's light. Like Florence Nightingale was bones. But God looked at that picture. And he had a picture in heaven that was full health. So there is a picture of your life in heaven of how you must be living victorious. There is a picture in heaven of your life on how you should be in the abundance of blessing because God says, uh, my thoughts are to bring you to an expected end. Let me give this testimony. I once gave it before of a sister who gave me this testimony saying that I just want to thank the Lord for speaking and answering my prayers through your sermons that I watched. The past months I was feeling far away from God, not even having strength to pray. I knew that something was definitely wrong. I could no longer read the Bible or listen to the tapes. I prayed about it, but my prayer was extremely weak and powerless. I cried to God for his interventions. I came across a sermon operating in the equal anointing. To be honest, that message was God talking directly to me. Every challenge I was facing uh, was mentioned. And during this sermon, you mentioned that if you are no longer reading the Bible like you used to do and listening to tapes like you used to, uh, you are in a backstreet and condition. You are the most miserable person in town. And that alone was a hard blow on me. God telling me directly that I was backslidden and also I'm an ego who just needs to be renewed to a high rock of edges. After the sermon, you prayed and I, was, I prayed along and God came and gave me the inner peace and restored me. So God can take you. Maybe we diagnose your case now that you are in a backslidden condition. God can pick you out from the mighty clay. God can restore you. God can transform you. It doesn't matter even the vilest offender, even the most wicked person. I was listening to the testimony of Nick Cruz, one of the gangsters in the time, in the old times there. These people who had great gangs there in the, in the United States. But when God came down through simple preaching of the gospel, a simple sermon is packing answers for your life. The man was transformed from being a gangster to being someone who is testifying for, for the glory of God. I had asked Brother Tube, he also has a similar testimony when he was in prison, and uh, he was converted when he was in prison, uh, right there in Sun City in South Africa. And now he's one of our vibrant preachers of the gospel. But network was not easy for him to connect, but one day he's going to give testimonies. I believe we have tangible testimonies of their power to transform. Yes, Brother Chimba, in our magazine, I think soon we'll be releasing this magazine so that it can circulate so that you see what God is doing in present tense. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. So he's now giving his testimony there that when he was a sinner, when he, when he was in the occult world, he was bound by evil spirits. And he, he had no carries that were beating people. He was sending evil things to um, assault people. But now he's one of the ministers of the gospel. God can change your life. Like in the, in the story of the podcast and he was changed in the story of Lycion Lycion was changed when the, the Bible says nothing could tame him but the gospel tamed him maybe nothing could tame your husband but prayer would tame him maybe nothing could tame your situation your raging situation but the prayer would change it maybe so, nothing could tame your disease but prayer, prayer would tame it when the cholera the storm was so violent the prophet was told speak to the storm and the storm was transformed to a bright day. Your stormy life can be transformed today to a bright day. There is something inside of you that cannot be contained by your situation. You, you must break forth out of those shells that are containing you. Your past cannot contain you. Your situation cannot contain you. But the good thing that has been molded in you must come out. God is chiseling sometimes in hardships and trials to bring the good part of you, to bring to manifestation the full promise of the hour in your life. In the beginning in Genesis there, when the earth was void without form, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God had a plan already, the diamonds and the gold were already there in that earth there. As bad and void as it is, the potentials were already loaded into that earth. Maybe as dark as your life is, potentials are still noted there. And God says, let there be, as the sermon is also saying, let there be peace. Let there be love, let there be joy, let there be victory, let there be healing in your life. God, when he started speaking his word, 
That word was transforming power to change the dark, chaotic world. The Spirit of the Lord started moving upon the face of the water. When the Spirit of God starts moving upon your life, something good starts appearing. Good attributes and this fruit of the Spirit start appearing. And good nature start appearing. So you are becoming the better version of yourself. When the face is formed, it starts as an ugly thing. But God starts molding the process. Things start joining together and something starts manifesting as the beautiful version of yourself. So every day, look at the scripture and be transformed. Like the transformation process that I was talking about with a butterfly, it becomes a better something. One time the prophet was preaching in Milltown. And then as they were doing the revival there, there came a man who had no teeth in the front. A thug, looking, evidently looking as a, as a thug. He came there and stood in the door. And they said, can you come and sit in front here? Then he said, don't worry, I'll take care of things at the back. You take care of things at the front there. It was William Hall. Any man was going to condemn that person. That's why I don't believe in condemning anyone. Um, so we have so many testimonies of who we were ourselves before the power of the gospel. Um, if inspiration allows very well, I think I will, I will sometime ask Brother Tapiwa to give his testimony of how God transformed him. With me, you see uh, my testimony of how I was. I used to have a, to be a Tikong man. And now if you play those songs, they don't mean anything. Whatever is, you know, when you are transformed, when you are changed, you cannot be bound again in things that were released from. When you are bound with lust, you can, even if women pass naked, you cannot be affected because you are higher than what was binding you. If you are bound by worldly music, that music should not affect you anymore. If you are bound by worldly dressing, it should not affect you anymore because you are now living higher, above those things that were affecting your life. So, that William Hall was changed. And he was made whole. And God changed him. He became a preacher. You know, when you see preachers preaching, we're not born like this. It's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I challenge whosoever thinks this situation is irreparable to come to the living waters, to come to the fountain filled with the blood, to come to the transforming power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you will find that he is not too busy to hear us cry. When the woman at the well was deteriorating, but she had representation in heaven, and God says, I must need pass through Samaria. We must need come to your situation today. We must need address even addictions. We must need ad address those who are bound in websites. We must need address those who are in hellish marriages. We must need address those who are almost giving up because God is looking for such people. He says, come let us listen together. Though your sins are as red as crimson, they shall be white as snow. He says, come those who labor and are heavy laden, I uh, will give you rest. So I'll go back now to the, I'll play this video there. And uh, God says, a desert shall blossom. Your life can be dry and you say things are hopeless. And you say things, there is no hope. Right in that dry, parched, hot, a desert type of life, there are seeds that are waiting for drops of water. When it's death all over in that ground, there are seeds that are planted there. That are waiting for water. As soon as water, as soon as quotation, as soon as the sermon, as soon as the anointing starts flowing, you will see that a desert shall blossom. A hard life can become beautiful. A tough marriage, I've seen God taking people away, divorced in 1996 and restoring them, and they are happy together now. God can take a hellish marriage and transform it. God can take and stand in the skies and your night smears and evil dreams can vanish. And you see something good and something beautiful rising because already potential is inside you. Already something has been placed in you. The deep calling to a deep and faith in you. So a desert shall blossom. When, when uh, St. Columba went to a, a place that was arid, a place that was dry, God likes sending his, his servants to areas that are so dry. And then he prayed until that place was changed. And he became one of the most fruitful places. With one hand, he was praying to God. With the other hand, he was planting. With one hand, we are praying. With one hand, we are declaring that things are going to happen in your life. There was, then things start happening. Even when Ezekiel went to the Valley of Tripons, things started changing. 
The valley was hopeless, but the bones stood from the midst of the rubble. And they, they, they moved on their own without being assisted. Because life entered them. When the life of Christ enters you, when the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken you. You'll be alive in faith. You'll be alive in testifying. You'll be alive in preaching. You'll be alive in living the life. I know at the moment, maybe you're like a torn ego, torn by circumstances, torn by unbelief, torn by backsliding, torn by your critics, torn by hopelessness and discouragement. But God can transform your life. The power of transformation, the transforming power is already in you. There is a man that can turn on the light. There is a man that can pick Mary Magdalene, who was a demoniac, to be a witness of the resurrection of Christ. There is a man that can take even Lady Maccabi, even Rab the Harlot, even Paul the persecutor, even Lycion the demoniac, even whosoever is rubbish and maybe is a reject, when men have, have cast you down, God can pick you out, out of the pit, out of the mighty clay. He can take thorny hearts. He can take unforgiving hearts. He can take scarred hearts. He can take stony hearts and change them by new birth. Because when a man is born again, that man is a new creature. The old is gone. The new has come. So you must be born again. You must be transformed. There is no transformation without first dying to your old things. There is no feeling without first emptying your old nature. There is no visitation without first repenting of your things and breaking your fellow ground and preparing. You see that woman was uh, who, 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 who washed the feet of Jesus with the hair uh, and tears of repentance. She was vile, but when that service ended, she was forg forgiven. God can tear the evil veils, the veils of Satanism, the veils of witchcraft, the veils of your past life, the veils of unbelief, the veils of sickness, the veils of your, of your old nature can be torn and you start seeing the light of his presence. There is a man, I hear a story in the days of uh, Smith Wigglesworth. There is a woman who had a husband who was an unbeliever. That husband in the 1890s there at Liverpool in England, that woman was a prayerful woman. I believe there is the power in a pray, praying woman. She was tired of the husband who was always a drunkard. He was always coming home drunk. And the woman says, I have an answer. Prayer will change this man. The woman respected the man. The woman submitted herself, but rejected the spirit that was captivating that man. The woman did her part and did her best that she could do. But she says, this spirit... I'm going to overcome it without arguments. But by the power of prayer, she went to Smith Wigglesworth and got a handkerchief to be prayed for. She believed, like in Acts chapter 19, verse 19, about the power of prayer. And that the prayer clothes, that were handkerchiefs, that were taken from St. Paul. So when the man came and thought his business as usual, he was so drunk and he went to his bed there. But the woman had put under the pillow the anointed prayer cloth and she was somewhere praying that the fire of God will remove this evil spirit that is causing this man to be reckless not to be a man in the house this is causing this man not to pray with the family which is causing this man not to forgive that is causing this man to be abusive so the woman prayed until the, when the anointing of God operated the spirit of heaviness the spirit of, that was causing him to drink was taken out of the man he was delivered and transformation was done by the power of prayer. It was done by the power of faith. When the man thought his business and, uh, as usual, he went back to the areas where he used to drink. Then when he went there, they gave him the beer. He could, he, he, it was now tasteless because something had happened. He was the same man, but not the same. He, but something had happened in him. When he, he said, maybe let me change the place where I drink. He went to another place and he tried to drink again. He says, something is wrong with your beer. Until they had to beat him up there. Because he says, I went back to the house where we used to go. Thanks to Calvary. Things are different than before. I'm not the same man that I used to be. Thanks to Calvary. We see the effects of the Welsh revival. Um, that when they prayed, even for benches, those who sit there, they were delivered. When they prayed, the revival caused uh, police unemployment because the Holy Spirit was now policing the people. 
People were now Christians. Even in the mines and in the communities there, they were singing songs of revivals. It was a real heartfelt revival. It was a great visitation. And that's what I'm expecting. A higher than that, when we get to consecration, when we give, get to giving ourselves to God, God can change our natures. That fire of the revival can come again. When the prophet was preaching in a certain place, that power of transformation came down. And even um, I hear that even the flowers grew. Uh, when they were artificial flowers because the transforming power is no limitation the transforming power doesn't look at how much long you've been in that situation how many times you've failed how many prayer lines you've been in god looks at his time and his power to transform and your faith connecting when your sister and his sons were always laughing at the gospel but when that power came down and he was she was told ask anything and it shall be given unto you that power came down and those boys were converted. And I can challenge you that if you have a, an unbelieving son or husband or wife or loved ones or mother or father, you can give them to God and that power will work on them. As we pray today, as we preach today, something will penetrate them to change their nature. Now, when the prophet was preaching in South Africa, deep in South Africa, when he did not mention about the dressing and uh, how long mini skirts and things and, and how their hair should be, but as he was preaching, the power entered the people. And they ran from the mapechus and things. And they started wearing like Christians. There is a silent force that enters a person and changes them from inside. There is this girl who was born crippled and with cap feet. And Brother Mnoti prayed for this girl. And uh, she was transformed. We see the pictures changing that something good, something wonderful. And we see her now stepping on her feet. Because whether the devil likes it or not. You must testify that I'm going to come out of my situation. You must testify that it's over in the name of Jesus. You must testify that God is going to make all things work together for your good. Uh, our world needs to know the power of a turnaround God. which can we, He can turn around things in your marriage. He can turn around things in your prayer life. You know, I know you may have patterns that you've been praying about for a long time. But I believe now is the time as we put the full stop of the blood of jesus christ to a situation it ends your situation right now i was as i'm talking about the power of, uh, of, of transformation there's this boy was thought to be a witch and they were he, he, he was left to die somewhere then someone came and saw potential in that boy and we see in the next slide there he started she started taking care of the boy and taking him to school but now this is the same person but not the same person people will ask is this the same sister is it the same person but something would have changed i remember one time when i was preaching in Dabas in Duna, there was uh, someone who was selling meetings and uh, uh concussions and roots there he was called sekuru kama as i was preaching you saw the healing of uh, uh mr kumal who had the cancer in the leg and we prayed for him and the cancer vanished he says now i want that god i went there and we have a revival and he bent all those things he was 80 something years and he repented even if you are 90 years you can repent even if he, he confessed his sins that time i was a young boy it was 209 somewhere there i was a young boy but he cleared his life too and we prayed together and god visited him so when men can see value in a car that seems to be valueless that seems to be broken and rejected god can see value in your life don't despise your life don't give up don't surrender don't be discouraged refuse to be discouraged God is seeing value, something beautiful. When they take this car to the uh, warehouse, there to the factory, they make it even nicer than it was before. Now, we have these spanners. I will show you in the next video there. They took this old car as old and torn and broken. Bring your knees to the altar. Bring your life just as you are. Come as you are. You won't stay as you are. There is transforming power. Something is radiating from the sermon. Something is radiating from the, 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 the scriptures. Something is radiating from the anointing to penetrate your life to bring something good and something wonderful. So they took this car as if as it was. God is taking lives today. Those who are addicts, those who are drunkards, those who are murderers, those who are cruel men who are abusing their wives, those who are womanizers, those who hate this message. God is calling you today to the factory. The spanners are here. The Adam keys are here. The power to change you is here. The anointing of God will break the yoke. The anointing of God will break your past. And your something, when God is through you with you, you will love the picture. Someone says, I'm not what I should be. But one thing for sure, I'm not what I used to be. Um, this thing I do, I forget the things that are past. 
and I pressed to the mark of the high calling. I was reading about the story of Motley, and someone was saying there was the real life Motley in India there, who was, uh, boy, they said, um, the story is like a boy who grew among the wolves, you know, the cartoon story of it. He grew among the wolves, and uh, they thought he, he, he thought he was a wolf because he grew under that circumstance. You grow among sinners and you think you are a sinner when they, you have a, a gem of representation God is in your life. Then one day, man came and they fought those hosts, the, 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 those wolves, and took him home. And the rehabilitation was not an easy thing. Because even when he was now at home, he was walking on four feet. Even when he was, some of you, even when you are now in church, you are still drinking. You must be delivered. Rehabilitation is a process. You must give yourself fully in total surrender, in total confession, in total separation from the things of the world, in total obedience, and then you can have total restoration. So they to teach them how to eat the food, how to, to be a man, and finally, he was a man. So today there is rehabilitation for those who are bound too long in evil dreams, for those who are bound too long in all past life. God is taking your life today and in the will, in the potter's will, he is picking the pieces again. When God he picks the pieces of your life, he does not turn upon them. He makes a new you again. We read the testimony of Brother Maduka, how he was taken from rags to riches. That is the power of transformation. God can take uh, the poor from the dust of the earth and he raises them to become somebody's a nobody and he makes them somebody in the economy of God. I was praying and I was preaching somewhere in Gwai and one, uh, another witch repented. I, I'm, I'm thankful to God that I've baptized witches, I've baptized murderers, I've baptized even uh, gamingers, the, the diehard criminals. By the power of the gospel, they tamed them. When jails could not tame them, when uh, discipline could not tame them, when, the, uh, when torture could not tame them, the word of God shining in their path has transformed them and today it will transform you and that power is already operating in us that power that changes us that changes you from a drunkard to a christian one day will change you to go to heaven one day it will quicken your body it will change you you know if god is able out of storms to transform them and raise the children of abraham is able to transform your life today the bible says out of weakness they were made strong so even if you're a weak person, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich because of what the Lord has done. Those people in Hebrews 11 were not just strong people, but it says out of weakness, they were transformed. They became strong. The Bible says every valley shall be filled in and every mountain and every hill shall be brought low. The crooked way straight, rough way smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. God is coming to your station today. He is coming to your life today to pick you as you are and change you. This world will be also transformed the same way, uh, like in days of Noah, it passed through the water, like we start with water. In the days of uh, Christ, 2,000 years later, uh, it, it passed through blood. Then now the fire is coming, burn all gems, and there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth, a paged and regenerated earth. So God also takes you through water, blood, and spirit to produce a paged believer so that you rise like an eagle above all the cares of this world when god changes you he changes your appetites he changes your nature he changes your desires he changes your dressing he changes your music he changes your associate he changes even your hopes and ambitions all is changed when jesus comes to stay i'm a testimony and i'm, I'm a witness of that power to change people as I'm preaching today, maybe your situation is an emergency. It needs change today. I'm going to pray for you. I want to close in a few minutes now because I believe when we preach about the power that heals, somebody has to be healed. When we preach about the power that picks you up, someone must be picked up. When we preach about the power that breaks your yoke, a yoke must be broken. When we preach about the power that restores you, someone must be restored. When we preach about the power that breaks your addictions and that breaks the, the demonic powers and family spirits around your life, we must see a reality of that. You must see the sermon materializing into tangible testimonies. We must see the sermon materializing until someone says, yes, thanks to Calvary, I was a cruel husband. I was not providing for my family. I was rough to my wife. I was a wife who was not submissive. I was uh, cruel also. I was uh, full of sanctioned behavior. But thanks to Calvary, now I'm a changed person. If you are sick today and you believe, just believe as I'm praying to, you, for, for, to God for you. 
only believe all things are possible. If you are looking at your situation, looking at your account, looking at your children, looking at your marriage, looking at the surrounding, looking at discouraging things around you, I tell you, those that observe lying vanities, they forsake their mercy. Look away to Jesus. Your mercy is coming now. Your victory is coming now. God transformed the life of Joseph. He can transform yours. He transformed the life of Mephibosheth. He can transform yours. He transformed the life of the woman at the well. He can transform yours. He transformed the life of Lycion. He can transform yours. There is nothing impossible with God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are a God that heals. You are a God that delivers. You are a God that is in charge. You are a God that answers. Father, as I preach your word, O Lord Father, let it be that there will be power and demonstration of things that I have spoken. Let the word go in power and never return void. But let it accomplish that it was sent to accomplish. Maybe your people are in situations deep in crisis. You are a God that can change a crisis to an answer, Lord, where they can see God like those who were in the fire. They saw God in the fire. Those who were in the lion's den. They saw God in the lion's den. Those who were in boiling oil. They saw God in that point. Let us see, Lord Father, you entering our circumstances. I break the power of sicknesses. I break the power of the deformer. The devil was deforming the life of believers, making them weak and powerless. And the, the attempt of the of the devil to invade the church and make it powerless and, and, and have no power to overcome. May those power, powers of the devil be thwarted as Christ overcame the efforts of the devil to gain dominion in his life. Father, may we discern and recognize the spirits that come to, to fight the church and put them under our feet and crush them and start testifying that we are more than conquerors, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, whether it's depth or height or principalities, whatever comes in all things, we are more than conquerors. Heavenly Father, I pray that Father, situations that are brought to you, as your people are praying all over the world, wherever they are, on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever they are, Father, may you start answering their needs, their agents, needs, their desires. May they be answered by your power, Lord, by your presence. And as we shall answer, enter this consecration week, oh, Father, may as we fast and pray, may we see a move of God and a mighty breakthrough and mighty uh, availability of testimonies like never before. May we see, Lord Father, you literally moving and your unseen hand touching everyone. May we see souls coming to the kingdom and the revival sparking and the glory of God coming like never before. A mighty visitation at individual level, at church level, at congregational level, wherever, Lord Father, your people are crying in their pains. Father, may you answer them. I commit this service saying all the sick people, may they receive healing in the name of Jesus Christ. All the backslidden, may they receive re revival and restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are hopeless, may they be visited even today by answers from heaven. I commit this service as it ends into your hands. May you visit your people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of this service. Um, maybe I'll get time to greet you uh, in the next uh, service. As for now, let's prepare for the services that are coming. Remember, next week, Saturday, we'll be having a youth meeting with our brother from America, two uh, guest speakers from America. And then the next, again, meet uh, Saturday, we'll also be having uh, a couple's meeting, continuing from where we left. So remember those dates and pray. And we are hoping that um, I will we'll update you either Saturday evening or Sunday evening, we'll be live at Christian Kids when we are when the videos are now ready we are polishing but we want to keep every platform alive and the revival going god bless you pray for us until we meet again amen